So today I will talk about uh, Crank, which is a tool uh, I'm working on for the ASP.NET team. Uh, I'm a developer in the ASP.NET team responsible for uh, performance and benchmarking uh, ASP.NET Core, sometimes the runtime, uh, everything that tries to make the uh, .NET Core be faster after, after every release. Uh, benchmarking matters. Benchmarking matters because performance matters. Uh, two examples, Amazon found that every 100 milliseconds of latency cost them 1% in sales, which is a lot, okay, for them. Uh, and Google found that 0 0.5 seconds in search page generation uh, time dropped, by, dropped, dropped traffic by 20%. Again, super important in this case, uh, latency is uh, what's performance? Uh, the goal is to make things faster or to handle more demand for the same resource in terms of cost, for instance, uh, or to handle or to use less resources to provide the same service. That's, that's why we want um, our apps to be uh, performant. Uh, why, why do we benchmark and uh, how do we benchmark? First, to prevent regressions. Something that you want to see is that uh, you do some change and then the perf of your app decreases or there is a change that you didn't expect. So you need to be able to prevent these and to prevent these, you need to measure before you commit your changes. So you need to, to do that. Uh, you need also to detect uh, regressions in case you could not preemptively find something will regress performance. You need to be able to detect uh, after the fact that something changed. And that's what we call continuous benchmarking, something that will run all the time just to find things after you've done a change or to detect something that you didn't expect. Um, next part is to also understand your uh, performance profiles. Like sometimes it's not just about detecting regressions, it's about knowing what the limits are. For instance, how many users can you or clients can you uh, support with a dedicated machine or what if you had half of the machines that you currently have or what if you changed from Windows to Linux or from Intel to AMD you need to understand what those numbers are uh, all the time and that's that's related to uh, SLAs um, and also to improve performance because you always want something to be faster and sometimes you want to have dedicated sprints or focus on performance and when you want to make your app be faster. So you will want tools to measure um, uh, these improvements. In .NET, when you want to benchmark applications um, or frameworks or libraries, you usually use benchmarks.net, which is the most famous um, benchmarking tool on .NET. The only issues with um, Benchmarks.net is that it's limited to a single process. So what you will usually do is benchmark a method or a group of methods, which can be complex and can simulate multi-threads, but it's not easy. Um, so it's usually very suited for console applications or for uh, libraries because it's per method. And that's very uh, fine-grained benchmarks. What we want to be able to do is to in the ASP.NET team is to be able to measure applications and also multi-tiered applications. So that's why we, we created Crank, which is an open source project that is made of agents like services and a controller, which is a CLI, that will let us run benchmarks on different machines, as many as we want, from one machine to all the machines you want. That's why I'm saying from one to many agents. Um, bench, um, it can benchmark a .NET application natively, which means it will be able to run .NET. It knows .NET very, uh, very closely, but it can also run anything that runs in Docker, which is very useful if we can't do everything in .NET, which is almost all the time. Um, but what it can do is remo remotely execute anything. Um, the goal is to be able to set up environments that will run different applications on different machines, but because these machines might not be 
your machine, you need to be able to access any kind of, um, of a network um, um, topology. So for instance, private networks. If your physical machines you want to use to benchmark something is in a private network, it will also allow that. And also it can run on different platforms. And it can run on different platforms because it's made in .NET, right? So because it's made on .NET Core. So it can run on Windows, Linux, Mac OS, but it can also run on different uh, architectures like ARM, uh, x64. We can run on different, yeah, AMD, for instance, Intel. Um, so that everything is possible as long as .NET Core runs on that. That's, just, that's super useful to be able to, to benchmark your application in different environments. And what it does also, it supports continuous benchmarking. So you will be able to run a benchmark and store your results locally on JSON or on SQL Server. For instance, Azure SQL Server, if you want to track the performance of applications over time and then do some charts. And I will show you how to do that. It can detect regressions because we have a, a tool that will also use whatever you have in your SQL Server database and find regressions for you. That's how you do continuous benchmarking to find regressions. And it can, um, measure pull request before you do any change. And uh, ultimately, it can run any apps as load generators if your application need custom loads. So for instance, we have um, SignalR clients, WebSockets, gRPC, HTTP2, HTTP3 clients, and so on. So we have lots of examples of clients, and you can run your own dedicated clients if you have custom payloads to send to your applications. So I will show you. Um, some demo. So here, um, this is the website for on GitHub that contains uh, the crank repository. And in this repository, there is all the services we need to, to run crank, which is made of agents, which are installed on servers, and uh, the controller, which is a CLI. So the first thing to do usually is to take this command to install crank as a .NET tool. So if I just paste that, it will go to get and uh, get the latest version of the crank controller, which is something I can then invoke and have all the help about it. But there is something else that I need, which is the agent. An agent is like, is like an Azure DevOps agent. It's a service that will accept jobs and run them um, for, for running benchmarks. So you can install it on every machine you want to, to use for your benchmarks. So now I have the agent also, and what I can just do is do crank dash agent with this command line. And now it's saying, okay, agent ready, waiting for job. So it's waiting for a, a job to run. Um, so what I can do now is on the right, I can start sending jobs to this agent to benchmark. So a job is just an app that we run and sometimes more than one app. Now, so in the case of ASP.NET, we want to run uh, at least two apps, one that will be the web application and one that will be a load generator that will send some requests to this app. And then I want to see how the client and the server behave. So to do that, if I go in the, oh, let me show you there. If I go in the current repository, we have some samples and something called hello that I will use. And this uh, Sample is just a CS approach file, a .NET app. Uh, so if I look at that, this is a .NET app running NetCore app 3.1 by default. And the only thing it does is, oh, not this one, startup. The only thing it does is um, return hello world when I hit the, the home page, right? So I have, I do have it locally. So if I go, There. there, so this is everything. And something else it has is this YAML file. This YAML file is a configuration file for Crank. And that describes exactly what the benchmark should do. In this case, the benchmark is made of one scenario, which will deploy one application and one load. So these are two jobs to run. One will be based on the name server, on the job name server, which is there. And one will be based on the job name Bombardier, which, we, which is imported from that. So Bombardier is a load generator. 
very famous load generator that is built in Go. Um, and that's also uh, um, very nice from Crank, which, is, which can run any, any technology. So in this case, we say, we say, okay, let's deploy a server and then let's run Bombardier on this port at this URL. And this application here that it, that it will deploy is saying, okay, the application is in this repository on this branch and you want to get the hello CS branch, right? And when the application started text appears from this app, it means you are ready and you can start the next job, which is um, the load generation. Finally, we have a profile. A profile will customize where to run these jobs. And this only profile I have today is just saying, okay, you can just use your local machine to the job. And this job, this URL, is the URL of an agent. And this agent is the one that is running there, okay? So the agent is waiting for jobs. And now I will say, crank, use the configuration file, which is, um, Hello, that benchmarks at YAML. In this configuration file, you will use a scenario name hello, which is there, uh, scenario hello. And from there, you will use a profile local. And by doing that, we will see what's happening. It's talking to the agent. The agent says, okay, I'm processing the job name application. It's a new job. And actually, it's going down. It's currently downloading the 3.1.4.15 SDK, the later stay spinach runtime and, um, and also the Netco runtime based on the framework that this app was made for. And we can see here that uh, it says the application is building, which is the case here. I will just ignore my pop-ups. Why is it not scrolling down automatically? That's weird. So I have to scroll down. Kind of disappointed here. And we can see here now the load job is running, okay, on the on the same machine. So this guy is sending all the commands for all the jobs to this thing. And the load is running, the application is running. So they are both running. Now they are done. They are shutting down. And load is no load is still running, sorry. Oh, it was okay. So the load, I thought it was done because there are actually two steps, the warm up and then the actual measurements. And now that it's done, I have the results for both the application and the load generation. Okay. And we can see here the load is what we care about is the request per second, 95,000 requests per second. And we can see what version it used. Nice thing with crank is that I can say, I can configure on top of the defaults what I want to run. There's so many things. Like in this case, if I want to run on .NET 6.0, the same application, I can just tell Crank run this app, but the framework should be .NET 6.0. And what happens here is that the agent doesn't have 6.0, so it will download the latest 6.0, which is fresh from two days ago. It will download it and run the same benchmark again. Okay, And then we can, we can see the, the result on the side. Uh, this, so while it's running, it will take 30 seconds. While it's running, I will show you what we do with that. What we do with Crank is we generate charts to track the performance of different applications. So here I just showed you a Hello World application, but we have multiple applications that we can track. And we look at the, the continuous benchmarking of this application to find when someone changes. Not only do we track multiple apps, but we track them on different machines. Because remember, I, uh, what I did here is here is profile local, but we have other profiles internally to track to target different machines, like Intel machines, AMD machines, ARM machines. We have Windows, Linux, and then we can compare that. So if I go back there and I select another Power BI page, you see other types of applications. So these are some applications we measure. So let's let's take, for instance, this one, uh, JSON, for instance, which is a JSON benchmark, a web app written in JSON. I can then select Windows and Linux to see on which machine uh, is the this app the fastest, or just 
if I select Linux, if I compare this one with another one like JSON versus MVC. So this one using middleware and this one using MVC. I can see the difference in RPS, in latency, but I can also see the memory and lots of counters that are provided by the Nodeco. So that's something that you can do with any app in Crank, even your app, your own apps. Um, so here uh, I'm, I'm running locally. So it might not be interesting because in this case, I'm using my own machine to start the benchmark to run both the client and the server. So it's not optimal. What you want to do is actually use different machines. So what we have is a benchmarks repository that contains lots of scenarios. So the crank repository contains all the crank services to run benchmarks. But the actual apps that we do run all the time are in this repository, the benchmark scenario. And here there is a readme that shows all the benchmarks we can run and their crank commands. So just to show you, we can also run, uh, for instance, Node.js because it's in, it's in Docker or whatever technology you want. We have command lines for that. Um, if I take a file which is ASP.NET profiles, this one contains different profiles, the local one like I showed you, but also profiles that we have internally with our own physical machines that we can target. So if I take this file and I use the same command as before here, but I also say config. Oh, by the way, let me see. Is it faster on the net six? 110 and before it was 95. Yes, it's faster, but it doesn't mean much because we are limited by the CPU usage and um, it's local. So we are actually bottlenecking on my own machine. But, but here, if I say use this file and you see, I'm adding another configuration file. And instead of profile local, I will say ASP, um, ASP.NET-PERF-LIN, which is a profile that will target a Linux machine, a set of Linux machine, actually. So if I hit enter, here nothing is happening, okay? But it's communicating to this machine, asp perf -lin. I can try to connect to that one. Let's see what's happening. You can see it's the same thing as before, but I'm remote. I'm connecting remotely to a different machine. So it's running on a different machine. And in this case, there is one machine that will get the application and one machine that will get the load uh, job, which means, so it should be done in a few seconds and I would get completely different results because it's a completely different machine that is actually dedicated. We can see here the application is shutting down. We can see the log of, of the application, which is kind of, very useful. Oh, it was done. And here in this case, I have requests per second, 370,000 requests per second uh, on .NET 6. I can even run on .NET 7 if I want. I could just change that to .NET 7 and then it will download the latest nightly build. And this is what we actually do. All the charts you see here are run for us on .NET 7 because in the .NET team, that's what we care about, running on the latest bits to to improve performance, to detect regressions, to, to find stuff like this, okay? We don't. We usually don't run on .NET 6 unless we need to build KPIs that will compare the perf of something in .NET 6 versus 7.0. And you can see that it, we shipped 6.0 two days ago, and but the devs, they were working like for two, three months already on the next release. So there is already some changes on 7.0 versus 6.0. Uh, some applications like Fortunes, which is a database driven one, if I click on Windows, you will see improvements like 12% already or 17% in this case, uh, even more sometimes in latency. So that, that's super interesting to be able to track that. Um, so here we have our things, uh, something we, we can, so this is to track benchmarks and what we can do here is that to make the benchmarks a little bit faster, well, quicker, I can change some parameters from the configuration. I can say, for instance, just run a small warm up and, and just run um, 
a duration of five seconds. So this way, the benchmark will be much quicker. Sometimes you don't want to do that. Usually you don't want to do that because you want your application to be completely jitted. So you will do a warm up of at least 15 seconds and then do a big duration to have correct averages of requests per second. So here is just for the, the, the purpose of the demonstration, it will be much faster to get results. And you see, I have almost the same results, but what's in, what I want to do that is because if you want to work on your uh, performance, you will want to take traces. So that's something you can do also. I can do application dot, um, dot net trace, which is a tool uh, made in the net to get a trace. And then automatically crank will tell the agent to gather, to record a trace while it's running. And then the controller, which is running on this side, will download the trace file. So I can then run multiple times with different parameters or different versions of my code and get traces to compare them. So here it says downloading a trace. I have a trace file, which is called application, the date, the trace. And this file here, I can take it. It's there. And I can, oh, it doesn't work that easy. I can drag and drop it to Visual Studio and see the profile of my trace. Okay, and I can see what happened during the six or 10 seconds that it ran. And then look at uh, what happened in my app if I want to study that. And that, that's super interesting because then I can compare traces if I do two runs. Like, let's say there is someone on Crank that makes a pull request uh, to test some changes. And the change here is to add uh, a, a delay of 400 milliseconds in the Hello app. So let's say I want to benchmark that thing to see if it's slower or faster. I have no idea, maybe, maybe it's magic, okay? So the idea is that this change is on the same repository, so I don't need to change that, but it's on the crank slash slow uh, branch. So what I can say is that run the same thing and then say application dot source dot branch or commit. How do I know that? It's because the YAML file defines the source from this repository and says branch or commit main. So application dot source dot branch or commit, and I can switch the branch. So I can say branch this, which is crank slash slow. That's where the PR is. And I will run it again. The server, in this case, the agent, will clone the same repository, but check out the correct branch run the benchmark again, give me the result, and also get a trace for that. Stopping. And now it's just 2,000 requests per second. Before it was 300. Before the latency was one millisecond, like 900 microseconds, so one millisecond, and now it is 101 milliseconds. It's like there is a delay of 100 milliseconds for each request. And that's exactly what's happening. And now I have a trace. I can even use tools like uh, Perview to read the trace. So if I go in the folder here, you see, I can load the traces. And because it's not CPU bound, but that's usually, in this case, that's a delay, I could even open the two thread time I will group by threads and in per view there is a div tool that shows you the div of something and if I had no idea of what's about what's happening I could dig into that and find eventually let me show you if I click this 196 uh, I should be able to find the task delay. Thank you, thread start. Maybe this one. No, this is the thread pool and tuning the stuff. There is there is a task delay somewhere. I can't find it. There is a fire next timer that must be related, but it's somewhere. Trust me, it's somewhere. Doesn't matter. So just to show you the kind of things you can do or 
look at different C's even on flame graphs. That's quite kind of crazy. Um, so that's how it works. Final, uh, final point, I think we are done otherwise. Um, all these measurements can be stored in JSON on SQL Server. And in this case, the graph I showed you here, this is in Power BI how we do that. The nice thing with this uh, SQL Server is that the storage is that everything that we measure and that is outputted this way in the console is actually stored in JSON. And this is one kind of result that we get when it's stored. And the results, they will contain what I showed you, but in JSON. And it will also contain all the historical measurements, some metadata, all the changes between the two apps and the, the, the dependencies. And this JSON here can be under, understood directly from Power BI and exposed. You see CPU row, publish, start time, swap memory, working set, first request. Everything is available just to be drag and dropped into Power BI charts. That's how easy we do the, the, the things. Um, I assume it's time for questions, if we have some. Yeah, hey, Sebastian. So first up, this is this is eye-opening for me. Uh, and you, you have to forgive me maybe for asking, uh, asking a couple of dumb questions here. But uh, you know, folks on uh, Twitch are recognizing uh, all the work that you do. They're calling you the amazing Sebastian Ross is here. Uh, so this, this is so nice to see because like, again, as uh, you know, developers working on .NET, we see the numbers like, you, you know, you showed off the tech and power benchmarks, uh, but we don't, often don't see what's going on behind the numbers. Like, how are you getting to the numbers? So I had uh, a couple of simple questions for you. First is uh, like, Crank, how old is it and when, when did this start? Two or three years ago, I think. Oh wow! It's the second rewrite of Crank. Second, it was started by someone else before me, and uh, I just took over the project. And then more and more features were asked by the team, and then we decided to make it to rewrite to rewrite it to support any number of uh, tiers. Um, and yeah, it can run databases, it can run microservices, it can run anything you want to throw yeah, it. That is amazing. Like I, uh, I was looking through the number of platforms you support. Uh, that that is just a lot of you know different types of apps you can run on a variety of platforms. And that's that's amazing. And uh, the one question I had was you had mentioned you know how you can do load balancing with you know things like SignalR, WebSockets. Uh, are those things you can uh, you know do from your local machine, or would you have to bring those requests in from outside? No, it's uh, so here. This load chart here is um, is just from a console app that runs that sends a load. So if your app sends a signaler uh, set of requests or web sockets, it's up to you. It's whatever you want on whatever machine you want. So you just have to build an app that sends the request you want. We have a bunch of apps like this that that are reusable because we do send similar requests all the time, web sockets requests all the time and so on. So that, that but yeah, it's completely open to, to whatever you want to send. You don't need external machines. You can, but you don't need to. And and when we say external machines, what we do is we always benchmark on dedicated dedicated machines to remove any noise. So right. never run a benchmark on your local machine like right. I did. You can, but you should not do that. Got it. All right, Sebastian, this is amazing stuff and, and we can keep on going, but there is a lot of more uh, content coming. So Sebastian, I'm going to, if you have nothing more to share on your screen, I'm going to drop that. And you know, thank you. Thank you so much for thank you very much. coming thank on you, and just giving us an inside look of how to do benchmarking and how we can all get in and uh, do this stuff for, for our applications. So Sebastian, thank you so much. And uh, you know, uh, have a great rest of your evening and uh, we'll keep on going here. Thanks a lot. Good luck. Bye.